Hi everyone, welcome back. So, starting off right where I left off the last time in the Dinosaur Family Cave, I'm still Kazooie on her own, so I'm just going to exit the cave and get on with the rest of this level. I am happy to say that I'm going to be leaving this level for a while at, uh, during this video, which is good for me, because as I mentioned before, this is probably my least favourite part of the game. And I'm going to be heading to a level which I like a lot more, so that's pretty cool. Although I think many people might not like it as much as I do. But that's okay, because there's lots of cool stuff to show off. But before I do any of that, I'm just going to shoot a clockwork egg here and head in this little hole in the wall. It's pretty cool that you can do that without having to stop flying. And one of the rock nuts is in here, so I'll just take care of him. He's mooning me as usual. It's really laggy when you blow them up. It's crazy. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is right over here. This is a jiggy that you get very late in the game usually. Um, you're supposed to like drop water down from one of the other levels and it comes into here and then the dinosaur drinks it and he gives you a jiggy. But um, the idea is that once the pool is filled with water, you can come back here and you can swim up and you can grab this Cheeto page. It's not necessary at all. Because if you're more skilled than me, then you can get it with a clockwork egg. I hope this doesn't take too many tries. I don't know why it's not getting it. I think I'm hitting it too low. Fortunately, there's a refill of these eggs just outside the level. Okay, cool. I got it. So I was a little too low, but that's alright. It's taken care of now. Ugh, that has me worried for some of the things I'm going to show off later. Hopefully they go a little better than that did, but I'm sure they will. So I'm going to activate the train switch, which is conveniently right there. This is going to let you bring the train in and out of Pterodactyl Land, which is going to be necessary for the Dinosaur Family side quest. As I mentioned earlier, one of them is missing, and we have to go and get it, and one of them is sick as well. We have to cure that. So, over here... I'll just kill this guy. I don't want him to bother me when I'm doing this. This thing that I'm about to do is one of the sort of bigger glitches in Banjo-Tooie. Not this exact application of it, but just the sort of principle behind it. If you stand right about here and look in here, you can sort of see that there's like a little crack between the fence and the wall. If you aim just right, your eggs will actually go through. So if I shoot a clockwork in there, I'm behind the fence and I can pick up the Jinjo. So that specific instance of the glitch let me skip having to turn into the dinosaur and open this switch. But there's still a couple more places where you're supposed to use the dinosaur, so I'll go and address those in just a minute. Before I do that, there's a warp here that I want to hit. If I could ever get up the ledge. Okay, so what do I want to go now? I just want to try and remember where the other one is. I think it's up there. Uh, yeah, it is. Never mind. I'm just having a bit of a brain fart. Okay, so where do I want to go? Is it over here? No, it's not over here. God, I'm like just totally screwing up. Like this level is so big that sometimes I forget which way I'm supposed to go and stuff. But yeah, never mind. I've got it now. I want to go over here because I want to head towards Mumbo's. I'm not going to transform into him just yet, although he actually is needed in this level. And there's actually a there's a treble cliff in here. If you just oh no, you can't do that. It's her. If you attack the rock, then you can just get it like that. So please don't hit that. Yep. Well, actually, maybe I can... Okay, that's not too bad. So yeah, I'm on top of that thing that I viewed from the sky in the previous video. I'm going to try to avoid mentioning it by name. So, now that I've activated pretty much all the warps that I'm going to use in this level, I can start doing some other stuff, I suppose. I'm going to head back up to the top of the mountain now. And need to make sure I get my bearings right. Okay, this is where I want to go. So I'm going to... Actually, here's something else that I can show off. Um, this is the same as in Donkey Kong 64, but if you run off a ledge while holding Z or Z, so like your character is crouching. I think it only works as Kazooie. Maybe it works as Banjo as well. It doesn't work when there's two of them together. But if you do that while you're running off a ledge, then you shouldn't take damage. Unless you're really, really stupid like me, and you hit the wall on the way down which cancels the animation. So a better idea, if you are really stupid like me, is to just flutter down, which is what I'm going to be doing from now on I think. 
But fortunately that's not a big deal, I just have to head back to the entrance to the level which I believe is over here, although who really knows because it's pterodactyl land and it's so easy to get lost here. Yeah it is here, okay cool. So yeah, just uh, just showing off that you can very easily die there. That was totally what I was trying to do. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump off and hold A. This is something that you can always survive when you're Kazooie by yourself. So, yeah, you're supposed to use the dinosaur for that. Not gonna be necessary, I already got those notes, so I can just take the tunnel as a shortcut. So over here is another place where you're supposed to use a little dinosaur. Again, you're supposed to stand in front of this and do something. I think it's like, you play, or you press the notes, the notes? You do like his roars in a certain order. Again, not necessary, you can just do this. Um, not that. Yeah, it's a little finicky, you have to sort of find the right spot to stand in, which can be kind of tricky. Always check it out with regular eggs first. See, that looks to me like it's going through, but... Yeah, that's definitely going through, and I cancelled it for some reason. Why did I cancel it? It's kind of hard to hold the control stick in the right spot, though. No, that's not going through. That's not going through. I had it there, I had it at the right bit. That's going through. Just need to carefully go down to clockworks. Why is it why is it doing that? I guess it's because the clockworks like fall when they're in the air. This is really embarrassing though, I really just want to get this stupid trick. Right, this has gotta work. Okay, cool. So we got it. And I believe those are the only two instances that I can think of off the top of my head where you need the dinosaur, where you absolutely, definitely need them. And I've managed to skip both of them. So what's the next thing I want to do? Yeah, I'm just, again, it's the size of the level. It's just completely throwing me off. Like, I know where I'm supposed to go. I'm just trying to remember, like, which direction it's in. And yeah, it's over here. I want to enter this cave. This is the cave of one of the tribe of cavemen. So I'm finally going to start exploring those. And there's a move for Kazooie in here, which is going to be useful in a bunch of levels. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it doesn't take too long to get back there, so I'm not going to bother editing it out. But it is still kind of annoying that this happens. It's just because I'm not paying attention, though. Sometimes it's hard to, like do things as you're explaining everything that you do. That's my excuse anyway. So just heading back to the start again. I don't think I learned the move yet. No, I didn't. I've already forgot whether I did or didn't. It's such a shame because there's like so many cool things to show off in this video and this just makes me feel like they're all going to fail before they work. Like I'll get them all on the third try or something. Which I suppose isn't too bad. So again, I'm just going to flutter down. Play it nice and safe. And this is where I want to go. I just need to try and be mindful of the fact that Kazooie only has two honeycombs. And I can't take as much punishment as I usually do when I'm just sort of running about. So this move, as the name would suggest, lets you hatch eggs. Doesn't matter what kind of eggs they are, who they're from, or how big they are, you can hatch all of them. And there's a couple uses for that in this level, and as well as some of the earlier levels. So there's a little tunnel in here which is kind of hard to see. The first egg in here is in here. If you remember from the last video, I don't know if I showed the text, I might have skipped it or something, but Terry, the boss that I defeated, wants you to go around and get all of the eggs. You just go find them all and hatch them. It's pretty easy, there's four I think. So that's the first one taken care of. There's nothing else for me in this cave at the moment, so I'm just gonna try not to die, first of all, and then go back outside. Oops, well I'm already failing at that part. But I'm gonna get the second egg right away, it's just outside of here. I'm gonna go up here first actually. And I'm just going to jump straight off and flutter. And I hope I didn't start fluttering too late. Okay, cool. I think the way they expected you to get this one is just to fly to it, which is easy enough, but... 
why do that when you can just root it like this and just jump straight down and somehow survive it? So here's that honeycomb piece that I purposefully avoided earlier. I can get it now because it's right on my path. Please get it. Okay. Oops. So the next place I want to go is the train station. I opened the switch for it earlier on. It's just over here. Because I'm now going to continue with the, the dinosaur family quest and I'm going to start taking the, the sick dinosaur out of the level so that I can go and cure it somewhere else. But before I do that, let me just... God, I'm kind of low on clockworks. That's a little worrying, but I'll be able to refill them really soon, so it's alright. This is the final rock nut. So I'm going to pick that jiggy up. Not before I get this health. Oh, nice. Screw that up again. The good news is that Kazooie's like so fast that it really doesn't matter too much if you screw up. Have we seen one of these yet? I don't know. I think we have maybe in Witchy World, but yeah, you can just like... They let you go back to the other characters. So now I'm Banjo. I'm going to show off that new move that I got in the previous video, the Taxi Pack. Somehow it lets you pick up pretty much anything. doesn't matter how big they are. doesn't slow them down at all either. So I'm going to take this sick dinosaur over at the train station so I can take it to the doctor. So I think this is the first time in the run that I've actually used the train, or well I haven't done it yet, I'm about to. But um, yeah, I'll be using it quite a lot, probably for the rest of the run. But I'll also be skipping quite a few instances where you're supposed to use it, where like you're never supposed to not be able to use it. Some very clever people found out that you can actually skip a few of the instances. There's a Jinjo over there, but it's actually a Minjo. You can just take my word for that, I'm not going to go over to it. It's kind of weird how, like, that guy's still there even though I killed him before. He's like the one that talks to you whenever you summon the train. So when this finally gets here, I'll pop inside this banjo into that cabin on the back. Drop the dinosaur in. And I'm going to exit this place. And that'll be me done with Pterodactyl Land for the time being. I'll come back to this, but it won't be for quite a while. And you'll get no complaints from me out of that. As I've mentioned many times now, this is my least favourite part of the game. So I'm glad to leave it behind. God, this cutscene is long. I mean, it's not long, but by Banjo-Tooie standards, it's pretty long. So I can just press Z and see you left to drop out the dinosaur. It shoots halfway across the room. Kazooie's right here, purposefully left her here so I can quickly reunite. Alright, let's get the hell out of here. Oops, what am I even doing? For God's sake, man, just. It's a ladder, it's not hard. This is ridiculous. This is actually ridiculous. Okay. I took like, what, six attempts? can't even activate the switch. Okay, so I want to go to the Isle of Hags because this is what Mumble's use on the overworld is. In fact, it's his only use on the overworld. Just like one part of a very long quest. It doesn't really make a lot of sense because later on you're going to use Mumble in Pterodactyl Land in the Dinosaur Family Cave to enlarge the, the dinosaur that's too small. It doesn't make sense why he can't just like heal the other one at the same time. It just seems like it was poorly thought out. Like, I don't think this is obvious at all. But anyway, fortunately I do know what I'm doing, even though it doesn't look like it sometimes. So, I will be able to take care of this. Does anyone else find that noise really annoying? The dragon kazooie jumping? I mean, it's not a big deal. I know these videos, in these videos, it's kind of hard to hear the game compared to my voice. I've got the audio set so that my voice is like something like eight times louder than the game, just to make absolutely certain that everything I say can be heard. 
because I had that problem in the past with some of my videos where the game audio was too loud. So I don't really know how annoying it would be for you guys, but it's, it's kind of annoying to listen to. But I don't really care too much. I'm not sure if jumping his mumbo is faster. I think just running as him is quicker. Maybe if you're going up a hill or something, then doing constant jumps would be best, but I really have no idea. There just is that little to talk about right now. Okay, so we're going to heal this right now. It's going to be a while before I actually take it back to its mother. It's just going to kind of sit in there for a little while. I like how its eyes open when it feels better. It just looks so much healthier now. Anyway, I'm not going to switch back to BK, I'm just going to save and quit, which means that I pretty much don't have to. Just saves a little bit of time. And I want to be next to a warp anyway, so that I can uh, head to a different part of the overworld. Okay, so I was running pretty low on clockworks. I'm going to have to fill them up pretty soon. Is there any eggs here? Yeah, okay, I want to get ice eggs. Nope, just missed it. How many ice eggs have I got? Okay, I've got plenty anyway. Just I'm going to need them for the next thing that I do as well. So, back to the wasteland. I'm not going to enter the level, just going to talk to Jam Jars because he'll always refill your clockworks if you talk to him here. It's a shame that he doesn't do that for everything everywhere, but if you go to the the location where you learn a move, learn a certain type of eggs or whatever, he'll always refill it for you, which is kind of handy. So I'm going to open the next part of the overworld. I can actually access it now because I have the springy shoes, which are just over here. You only get one jump out of these, so they're, they're pretty useless. Feels kind of like a filler item. So here we are at the quagmire. This is probably the ugliest looking part of the game, but it's supposed to be like that. So yeah, I mentioned earlier that when I reset during the cutscene where we opened Grunting Industries that there was a side effect. And I just want to kill this guy because he's just going to get on my nerves if he's alive. Really? No health? Whatever. Anyway, the side effect is that this little no entry sign is still here. It's completely fake. You can jump through it. But because I never watched the cutscene where the door gets blasted open, the sign is still there. There's a Genjo up there, but as before, it's a Menjo. Not gonna bother. Okay, so... What you're normally supposed to do in Grunty Industries is... You come in, you notice that you can't get in there, because the door's shut. There's no way, if you go around the entire perimeter, to open it. But there is a train switch over there. If you hit the train switch, it opens the train from the inside, which means you can go back to a previous level and take the train to get inside. I'm going to completely skip every single part of that by using a really cool trick with the clockwork eggs. Now, I'm going to just stand back for a minute and try and explain this a bit. It might take me a few tries to get this, but basically, if you enter a loading zone, with a clockwork egg, but before the game completely turns to black, before the area completely loads, you take damage. Then what happens is the game flips you back to Banjo-Kazooie, but because it happened during a loading zone, you get warped up to that loading zone, if that makes any sense. And when you take damage when you use a clockwork, it stops the clockwork and you go back to BK. So, I don't know, I'm going to probably show this glitch off a couple times. So what I want to do first of all is let him hit me, then shoot an egg backwards at him to freeze him, Pull out a clockwork, shoot it into this window. Turn around so I can see. Okay, cool, so I got it. So as you saw, Banjo took damage while the little jiggy thing was coming in. And this means that I've now entered Grunty Industries, first try I might add, with Banjo-Kazooie without using the train. So yeah, that's a pretty big skip right there. Definitely one of the coolest glitches. I'm going to show that off again just because I, it is kind of hard to explain. 
the idea is that you enter the loading zone and then take damage. So the best way to ensure that that happens is to freeze him so you can time it a little better. Where is he? So I let him hit me once, then I shoot an egg backwards, I move away from him, I shoot a clockwork into here, I turn around, hold R, it's important that the camera faces this because otherwise it's not going to work. Banjo won't take damage otherwise. So, yeah. And when I hear the sort of clunk on the ground, I wait a second and then I head in. And that means that Banjo will definitely take ja damage during the little transition. So that's pretty neat. I can't believe I got it first try both times by the way. I'm not trying to brag, it's just that in practice it usually takes me a few tries to get that one. So now that we're inside, I'm going to take care of a couple of things in here. First of all, I'll learn this move. It's another set of boots. Uh, this one is a lot more useful than the springy shoes. Oh, he bonked! It's been a while since he's done that. But yeah, it's a lot more useful than the springy shoes. Um, still kind of gimmicky, but... I don't know. I just, I just think it's a shame that they didn't use the ones from the first game more in this one. So I'm going to play around this Kazooie for a little bit. I'm going to shoot a clockwork up here so I can grab these notes quickly. Not until I kill this guy though, because he's going to get in my way. Come on. That was the only reason I used the clockwork there, just because I'm too lazy to get up the normal way. So I want to head into the train station. As I mentioned earlier, this is how you're normally supposed to get in the level. A couple of notes to grab in here. These guys are all over the place in this level. Kind of annoying. Whose voice is that again? I can't even remember. It's like someone from the first game. It's annoying me that I can't remember. Anyway, so in this level, I'm, I'm going to kill this thing. It takes three hits as Kazooie to kill this. It's pretty ridiculous. I'm going to grab this as soon as it turns to clockwork, just to make sure, because I'm going to use another one right now. So I want to stand on this box, about here, roughly, and I want to shoot a clockwork up there, and I'm going to try and get that honeycomb. I usually aim it just to the left of that lamp. Okay, perfect. So this is a train station. Normally... As I mentioned, I would get in here, but I'm not even going to activate the train. I don't need that at all. And the main reason for that is that, unlike most of the levels in this playthrough, I'm going to do this one in one go. Everything in this level is going to be finished at once. Okay, so before I head upstairs, I want to jump into the workers' quarters. This is where all the employees live. Apparently they're not allowed to leave this place. And there's a bunch of things in here, but the main thing I'm interested in is in the men's room. This is not what I wanted, I guess I'll just do that. I thought I had the grenade eggs equipped. So here's a character from the first game. Just gonna abuse him like we did in the first game as well. Yeah, I definitely took damage, but because it was during a cutscene I didn't die. Which is really handy, because I would have died. If, uh, if that wasn't a cutscene. So in this room there's quite a few little neat things to show off. I'm going to take a minute and just do that. I don't think there's anything in this room. So these are the rabbits. Um, this is another side quest that we need to... I don't know why I'm calling them side quests. Like, they actually are part of the story. You have to, like, clean all of their stuff, which is a clue as to what the transformation is in this level. And there's also a secret room in here, which I think... What does it have? Just eggs. Okay, cool. So I can refill my clockwork here. Obviously there's pictures of Wumba and Mumbo everywhere. And the, oops. Well, I'm not going to get to show everything else off, but on the fridge over there there's a Donkey Kong magnet, and I think there's a Banjo-Kazooie magnet as well. Which is pretty neat. Okay, so I think... I want to go upstairs now, do I? Yeah, I want to go upstairs now. I don't have an excuse for that in this level, I'm just blanking a little bit. I actually really like this level. I think it is very easy to get lost in it though. If you do this level in one go, like, I mean, without really turning the game off for too long, like in the middle of it, it's actually pretty easy to do everything in it. Because you sort of remember where everything is. Anyway, if I just stand here, I'm aligning myself with this sort of black line on the pipe. You can see it right there in front of Kazooie. just want to stand next to that at the edge of it. Aim up with a clockwork and aim for the middle of this light. And hopefully we'll get it soon. Okay, I think I might be too far forward.
Okay, cool. So I got the jiggy. It's a little finicky, that one. Um, you need to pretty much land right on it. Not the easiest to do. Although I would say it's probably easier than the trick to get inside here, which I managed to get first try, so... Probably shouldn't listen to me on what's difficult and what isn't. So I'm going to head upstairs now. This level, much like Frantic Factory in DK64, is vertically oriented instead of horizontally, as most of them are. So normally that's something that I dislike in games, but I think it actually works really well in this one. Because the floors are sort of like their own mini levels almost. Anyway. A couple of grates all over the place actually that you have to open in this level as well. A lot of that is for the transformation that we're going to do later on. So that it can access everything that it has to. So yeah, these guys are back. Oh, you know whose voice it is? It's the turtle from uh, Bubble Gloop Swamp, isn't it? I think it is. Anyway, so over here, as you can see, there's a Cheeto page. You're supposed to get it from the outside. Let me just try and show this off. There's like a door over there, blah, 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 whatever. But I'm going to do it a much cooler way. If you stand here, just go into first person mode, you can see a little crack there. Just aim for it. Shoot your egg through. Shoot a clockwork through. There you go. Nice and easy. I'm going to shoot another clockwork up here. So that I have to come back for this, Jinjo. Wow, that was tremendous. Okay, cool. I'm always a little worried when I get low on those just because they are so useful in this game. Okay, so here's another move for Kazooie. This one is pretty much a backflip. I mean, that's really all it is. I guess it's kind of like those shock spring pads, but without the pad. He bonked again, but without the pads. Because it is quite a high backflip. It lets you... I don't know. And uh, you can actually use it to clear a lot of gaps that you're not supposed to. Or at least earlier than you're supposed to. So there's a couple of notes in this room that I'm going to have to get as well. I really don't like spending time in the rooms with these guys because like, if you wait about too long, if you stand still for just a few seconds, they will zap you, which is always unpleasant. So where do I want to go? I want to go down here. No, I don't. I just took the wrong tunnel, didn't I? Yeah, I did. It's up here. It's this one. And I'm going to head up to the third floor now. Wait a minute, actually. I think I might have forgot to do something. Must check it. I mean, I'm, I'm getting a couple of things along the way right now, but... Yeah, I did activate it, okay. But the main thing I'm doing right now is just activating the warps in the second and third floors so that I can jump about the level really quick later on. Because some, some of the jiggies involve going to multiple floors. So, I need to make sure I'm ready for that. Oops. So there's another rabbit over there. Where is he? There he is. There's like, I think there's six or something of those in the level. You have to go and see all of them when you're the transformation. A little bit later on. So, again, this is for that exact purpose. I'm not going to go through there. It's just a shortcut for the transformation. In fact, I think it's the only way you can get over here. Anyway, I'm kind of babbling a little bit right here. So you can just use the leg spring that we just learned. It's just a backflip, just said an A to get back up here. This takes us to the third floor, which is like the storage room. We can see now what Grunning Industries actually produces. So that's kind of interesting. Oh, whoops, didn't mean to do that. It's alright though, because the leg spring is very, very high. So you can just do that to get back up. And I'm gonna... Right, okay, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna run off, crouch, and then do the leg spring while I'm in midair, because otherwise I won't be able to reach this. Like that, and then flutter, and then attack. Okay, just barely made it. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I mean, all of this is avoidable if you just like use the shock spring pads that the game gives you, but why would you do that? That's so lame. So another Jinjo up there, but that's a Minjo again. I'm not going to bother going up to it to prove it. I just have to take my word for it. And over here is Mumbles. So I've now got a warp to that. 
and I'm actually done running about the level for now, so I'm going to kill myself to quickly get back to Banjo. So finally I'm going to open this place the way you're supposed to after you get in here with the train. Oops. I hate that it lets you jump without before it lets you press A for the thing. That's just so silly. So as soon as this is open I'm gonna I'm gonna hit that warp in there just to make sure I can quickly get everywhere that I need to. Gosh, it takes a while. Just the little loading pauses between it are what really does do me in. So here we are. Granny Industries is now fully open. I've already been to a good portion of it, at least to, to unlock the warps, and I can just enter and exit as I please now. And I haven't been on the train at all. So yeah, hopefully this video has shown how useful clockwork eggs can actually be, even if you're using them in like a totally unintended way. But that's usually the best way to use them anyway, or to do anything in a game. So yeah, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.